What's up, Badgers? Today we have a new and exciting show, which we hope you'll enjoy and hopefully at one point join or have your friends join in the near future. With all the recent drama and high-profile news that's happening, we want to know what the Badgers think and get their opinions and see if we can lash out and find a definitive, definitive bottom line to all these topics. So today we have Tashanta, Nevi, and Chris. So Tashanta, you go first. Just introduce yourself and program year you're in and a fun fact about yourself. Okay, so I'm in, I'm in the BBA marketing concentration. Um, and I'm in my fourth year. And a fun fact about me is that I like to dance. Nice. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm Chris. I'm in business comm. And a uh, fun fact about me is I speak French. Oui. Uh, my name is Nivi. I'm third year business comm with a minor in environmental sustainability. Um, fun fact about me is that I watch a lot of Netflix. So wow. this, should, this should help. You have a lot of time. You make time for the things that you love. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> inspirational. All right, so thank you guys for coming out. My name is Jordan Morris. If you guys don't already know, shout out Hallway Hold Ups if you want to see me there. On um, today's episode, we have a couple of different topics that we're going to talk about. But well, first, we'll dive into 21 Savage. So recently, in the past couple months, there's been, he got arrested by the ICE in the U.S. for not having a visa and immigration policy. So should he be forced to go back to the U.K. after be being in the U.S. for so long? Because his visa expired in 2004 or six, I believe, and it's now recently just being brought up. So how do you feel about that? It was a big surprise to me, honestly, because he, like you said, like he's his, his visa has been expired for so long. Like, how come all of a sudden it's being brought up? Um, and he's also, I don't know if it's all true, but like in his songs, he's always talking about like being in trouble with the law. Like most people that do get in trouble, if they, they're they seen like, yeah, you're not even a resident of this or a citizen of this country. Like we're kicking you out. So that was a big surprise to me. Like, I don't know, some, some shady stuff going on there. How you feel about it, Nevi? So I'm completely against the fact of anybody doing anything illegal in the first place and mm -hmm. staying in a country where you're not supposed to stay despite the fact that your visa has expired years ago, um, regardless of if you're a celebrity, if you're someone super popular, if you're someone super rich who has such a big fan base, that does not mean you can cross the law in any way. Um, with that being said, I also understand that in terms of immigration, there could be two sides to the story. So we don't, as the, the government doesn't tell us everything, so we may not necessarily know what exactly his case is. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, I think the first thing that his team should do should try to get him to stay here legally before we're trying to deal with anything else and like get him deported. So yeah. I'm not 100% sure about that. Because like his team has been going through every like proper measurement to keep him like in states and keep his visa. And remember, like he came here when he was six, like with his parents. So mm -hmm. think about that. It's like if you're an immigrant, like your parents move over here and you're, you're here. Like you're six-year-old, going to school, middle school, throughout university, and you're like, you're Canadian. Throughout, throughout. So now all of a sudden you're supposed to go back to a place you've never been, no one you know, or anything like that. And you're just, because think about it, like if you're here your entire life, so just because you said some things in a song, they're going to target you? Or to just look into it more. And if you feel like you're sketchy. Yeah, so he has to take responsibility. It's not, I understand that maybe it's not just him and maybe the news, again, the media is so manipulative in a way that we are made to think that, oh, you know what? It could either be that this guy is doing something right or wrong. Um, to also play devil's advocate, maybe the government is going after him for the right reasons. So yeah, it's really, we don't know everything, which is why we can't really, yeah. Yeah. There, so how would you guys feel Although his visa is expired, but he's expired, he's applying for the U visa, which would make him legally entitled to stay in the country. So how would you feel if he is let go and basically all that happened was for no reason, just brought him out and took him away from his family for that small period of time when he was actually incarcerated? So I think a big part of it could also be there's two ways to look at it. So one thing I think is that maybe all of this was to instill fear in the masses to be like, you cannot get away with doing something like this, um, but there is a way out. The other thing 
that personally hurts me more is the average Joe could never get away with something like this. It's only because that he is a, like an international celebrity and he has this he has all this money and he has all this pull, which is why he's in a position where he can make this call that, oh, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to extend my visa, do whatever that I have to do. So I think that a penalty should be imposed, but in such a sense that it's even across all playing fields, if that makes any sense. I don't know. I feel like uh, it's hard because I think pretty much everything in the U.S. government is corrupt, so... <laughs> Like, Good to know. Yeah. Shout out no, Canada. Yeah, no, like, okay, like, even, yeah, like, they should give him some type of penalty just to say, like, okay, yeah, like, what he did technically was wrong. I don't know. I don't uh, know. I would agree yeah. with you that he was punished, but, like, what did he actually do? Like, he didn't do anything besides, like, come to, like, come with his mom to Atlanta. Then, like, he made some, like, in his songs, he may be, like, allude to rapping, but what did he physically do? Like that's do yeah. that's one of the things he's saying. It's like, why should I get the same yeah. punishment as a murderer just for saying not doing anything? And yeah. he did apply for the visa. It may have been late 2017 when like it expired earlier. He applied for it, didn't do anything. So why did he spend those days in jail? That's because everyone's forgetting like he was in solitary. Like those jails are worse than like actual prisons. So why did yeah. he do all that? Well, he went. He he was punished. He was in jail yeah. for what? Moving here? Like I moved here for my mom. When I was one, so because I moved here with my mom, I'm going to jail, jail for a bit. So if I, if I become a SoundCloud rapper, I started rapping about 2007. RCMP is coming <laughs> for you. <laughs> you know, RCMP is <laughs> coming my door. Like, why? Stupid. Like, no. Stupid. <laughs> 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 You're stupid. Are you dumb? Why should we punish him? You didn't get punished, but why? Is there a good reason? Talk to Mike. Sorry. All right, so yeah, um, Gucci had the turtleneck blackface, and Burberry had the new city, and then what the blackface the creative directors are saying oh that that wasn't their intention at all and then the celebrities are saying well you obviously had to get the inspiration from somewhere and then with Burberry a lot of people are saying there's a lot of ways to tie a rope and you decide to specifically tie it that way in the front on on their necks so how do you feel about and should celebrities be held responsible for using their platforms to help movements or boycotts because if you know Soulja Boy, who always rocks the Gucci headband, he said he's not wearing any more um, T.I. And then con on the other hand, Floyd Mayweather got caught saying that he's not going to be boycotting Gucci. And it's, he's been, he's, his claim was that he's spent his time, he's worked hard to get to the level he's at, and he shouldn't have to conform to society in a way. So how do we feel? A lot of points that you guys, but yeah. Well, the first, like how I feel initially about this stuff, yeah. Like, of course, it brings anger, it brings confusion, it brings like, what were you guys thinking? But at this point, I'm thinking this is like being done on purpose. I don't even see because you see the media backlash. Like we saw what happened with H and M. Like it gets people riled up, whether they agree with it or not. Most people don't, of course, but like it's still publicity. Bad publicity is still publicity. So. Your, people are now talking like how we're doing this right now. People are talking about Gucci. People are talking about Bur I don't even wear Burberry, and now I'm talking about that. You know, like I feel like a lot of it is not uh, not just oh like you guys don't have a diverse like marketing team or a diverse like you know uh, directors. It's like they just want the publicity. That's how I'm seeing it at this point because you know like. So you think it's like a plan? Like they knew it was going to be controversial. Like, but I'm thinking at this point because you can't really tell me that oh we didn't know like that we live in 2019 like almost every person has access to the internet especially them if you are you know and working on those teams like yeah you assume it has to go through like layers of yeah exactly layers confirmation. of approval exactly exactly so um, yeah that's just my thoughts on it and like boycotting yeah celebrities I think do play a big part in that because why do people wear a lot of the brands they wear because their favorite celebrity is wearing it, right? So um, by Mayweather saying like, oh yeah, like I'm not gonna wear that or I'm not gonna boycott, like, you know, I can wear what I want, just says like, okay, yeah, this is okay. And then it just gonna, it's just gonna continue happening. But that's just my thoughts. What do you guys think? I'm gonna have a little bit of a hot take. Cause I don't know, cause apparently uh, the mask design of how it was, they've continuously had that same mask design with different colors, right? So they had the same mask design with green and yellow. So the whole hoodie would be green, 
then the lips were, were yellow, right? So it was only a problem when they then switched it on to the black and the red lips designed for the mask. And that's like where the controversy came. And at the same time, I see what people are saying, but we can't like, can't cry wolf, that makes, that makes sense, right? You can't say everything is, is terrible. Like the Burberry, that has a completely different connotation because that's like a noose. Like even if you even go beyond race to like, they're, they're made like suicidal jokes. Or suicidal yes, anything, that was also another thing. Or just like they're making light of suicide for fashion mm -hmm. instead of like anything. But like, it's just a weird, weird situation. I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. um, that actually made me think of something where we also, again, as consumers, are extremely sensitive to what we see and how we choose to make our buying decisions. So if there's something that maybe rubs us off the wrong way, we it happen, It turns out into like the H&M thing, for example. So, 6 9 Takashi 6 9 he has been currently recently incarcerated for racketeer charges with his gang and okay and he also has previous criminal charges and sexual abuse that has been kind of diminished and not really brought up that much but recently a lot of everything from him has been brought up so he's currently trying to because he was supposed to be locked away for a very long time for many years i think 30 plus years but but currently he's apparently cooperating with the officials and legal team to reduce his charge, but he's currently basically snitching on his gang that he just brought up with, that he was there with him when he got famous and then he left them. So how do you feel about considering it's also said that his gang was allegedly the one behind his kidnapping and robbing him and targeting him? So how do we feel about him? Is it really snitching because it, they kind of went like past boundaries and went over his family? Or is it always snitches get stitches? Because <laughs> a, a lot of the rappers like um, Meek Mill and a lot of them are saying you shouldn't have snitched, doesn't matter because when he gets out, it's put in his family in even more harm. So how do we feel about that? So... To begin from the very beginning, 6 9 did not register as a sex offender. So from the very beginning, this guy's off. You clearly know. Like, yeah, I I get it. You, you have, okay, you need to understand where your loyalties lie. I understand that. And I'm all for that. If I, not if I was in his shoes, never mind. That I could never think like that. Hmm. So if I was in a James Bond movie and I was supposed to snitch on Trey away, I would go and look for people who would benefit off the most from them not existing. So who are the other stakeholders in this matter? No, so essentially, yes, if so, there was someone else, let's say a gov the government, for example, that's going to benefit off of knowing how they work and how they operate, then maybe utilizing like witness custody protection or whatever that it is. Yeah, that's what they said. Like when he's released, he said he's going to go into it. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. They was like, how are you going to hide this? Did you see the meme where it was like 6 9 but then under witness protection is like 6 8? <laughs> <laughs> Please insert that here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Why are we all plenty of different? <laughs> I was, I was thinking, but then she started pointing there already, so I was like, man. Everywhere, everywhere. Just <laughs> six, eight, six, eight, every, you got a six, eight, you got a six. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I can't really comment too much on this because I don't know the streets like that. I don't know. Like, I, I do. <laughs> okay. I, you know, I understand, like, I understand, like, okay, yeah, like, you don't snitch on your gang, but, like, if they're, if they don't care about him, like, Who's to say they he'd be in jail and they just take all his money, already maybe go after his family, do whatever you know? Like, I don't know. They are all they all got they all got arrested at the same time, and then six nine started snitching already. So he was even in there like six months yet. Boneless. He has a daughter. Yeah. Yeah, but like he would keep. He has a wife. He has a girlfriend. He has yeah. What? He has many people with him. I don't even have one man. Wow. <laughs> this concludes 
first episode of the Shade Lounge. Shade Lounge. Shade Lounge. <laughs> with all that was said, um, with the, all the topics, I hope you guys, I guess not informed, but got to hear the opinions and got some different perspectives on different things. And hopefully let us know how you feel about them. We will see you next time. Don't know when that will be. But be sure to send us some topics that you want to talk about. Um, let us know. Comment on the video what topics. And if you want to be in it, my email is jmorris at brocktv.ca. Give us your topics if you'd like to be in it. And anything else, constructive criticism and what you want to see differently on the show. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And I hope the guests enjoyed our little talk here today. Thank you guys for coming out and thank you for having us no worries thanks for coming we'll see you guys next time on the shade lounge shade 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 sh